Susan Harris at Quilt Lizzie in Aden, North Carolina. And I'm going to do a, about 10 years ago, I did a video on how to load a quilt on your handy quilter long arm. Well, the frames have changed. And so we're going to do an updated video. And I also want to record this in perpetuity for my staff who's learning how to load quilts now in my store. So you start with your backing. And of course, you want your backing to be right side down. It's going to be on the back of the quilt. And I find the middle of my backing in a very scientific way. Oh, that's the middle. And this fold is roughly the middle. This is a small quilt, so it's not going to take up a whole lot of space. Now look, I pulled up my leader and on the wrong side of the leader to the wrong side of the leader to the wrong side of the backing, you start pinning. And I know there's all kinds of ways to do to put these things on there. And I start in the middle because I want to pull it away from the middle so it won't end up on the skewed on the frame. Wrong side of the quilt top to the wrong side of the leader. Okay? And I, I know people use other ways, but I'm a pinner. And I'll tell you why I like to pin. Because if you get to the end and you have to make some sort of an adjustment, you can take a pin and move the quilt just a little bit and you're not committed to a whole stretch. You can, it's like easing a sleeve into a, uh, when you're doing dressmaking. Like if you're trying to put your sleeve in on here, if you pin, you can move things around. My last pin, these are those pearl headed hat pins. Turn it this way, okay? And I don't pin mine very close together. This is hard to see on this particular fabric. But I have a full palm between my pins because the more pins you put in, the more pins you got to pull out. I don't know why in the world anybody thinks they got to pin it to death because the tighter you make it, the more chance you have that the quilt can't move under the long arm. And it needs to be able to move and flex and stretch so that if you have to lay something down or do the, if, you, if we get part of me long arm, and sometimes when you're putting down your, your uh, when you're sewing down the end, you have to act like you've got a can of, peas or something of canned good in your hand because you have to kind of push. Well, you can't do that if you've got a bunch of pins in it because it's not going to move. So, just like everything else in life, less is more. Well, except for fried chicken. Fried chicken should always be more. And purple whole crowder peas. And fried catfish. I must be hungry. Okay, I've got two more. Now, the next part of this is going to be, and can y'all tell my hair went gray since I did the first video? I think I did that one. It's been 10 years ago, sure enough. Okay, we're going, this one just goes in like normal because what you want is for your pearls to be on the end and on the end here. So if you touch the quilt, now notice it's wrong side of the leader to the wrong side of the, of the fabric. Okay, so far so good. You with me? Now I'm going to go around to the front. Okay, take your quilt back and throw it over the front of your frame. We are going to use the friction of the lead, the leader, the leaders, the friction to crank this thing up. We got a handle back here on our handy quilter long arm, okay? And we've got our, our ratchet down. And just watch, watch, we're just going to crank it up. And it comes up nice and level, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, but right now it's in the wrong position on the frame. Because if you were gonna long arm it like this, this is on an incline, we don't want an incline. We wanna put this thing together like a biblical scroll so that the pieces come over like this because we want it to be flat down here in the middle section. So once you get it cranked up, on, you know, rolled up back in the back, bring this over like this. Lay it up here all nice and neat. Ooh, that thing's got a magnet on it, I can't believe. So see how I've got this laid up here? It's just laid across. Now, you just bring your back quilt back right up across that. Bam. And I'm not Emeril Lagasse. <laughs> so I'm gonna hold this and I'm gonna pull this down just a little bit more. Leader to do this. 
And I want the I want the leader where it's laying just along the edge of the second bar. Nice and neat. Okay. And then hopefully this time it's about right. I'm gonna loosen it one more time. Sometimes I'm more perfect than this. Get it just a little bit of length. The idea is I know some people think, hey, that's so much work. Well, you know, you can load it however you want to. My quilts come out straight and pretty. And they don't call me Quilt Lizzie for nothing. See how I'm lining this up now? If you'll notice, I don't do any laser line. Hang on, my britches need to be pulled up. I don't do any laser line trying to straighten or any of that stuff. I eyeball it. Because when this thing is quilted, finished is better than perfect. Nobody's really going to know whether you did it exactly straight. I don't square my quilt. If you have a really good quarter inch seam, which there'll be an upcoming video on how to do that, you don't have to worry about squaring because mostly it's going to turn out square. And I mean, nothing in nature is perfectly square anyway, except for parts of my hair, which are sort of cow wicky. Okay, I'm going to get some of these pins and try not to cut myself and just throw them in here because it's easier for me to get them here than to pull. And see, now I'm just going to start pinning this one. Where did I start? In the middle. In the middle and working my way to the left. With a palm, you know, depending on the size of your hand, but that's probably four inches in between. You don't need to have those pins all butted up against each other. For one thing, if you get them too close, you might end up with little tucks and pinches. And you don't want a tuck or a pinch. Now this time I'm going back of the, the wrong side of the backing to the right side of the leader. So there, wrong side to wrong side. Turn this last one so that the pearl is always out here. Well, just imagine if those were real pearls. Other thing I want in life that I'm going to have before I die is a nice strand of South Sea pearls. So if any of y'all got some that you want to just donate, I believe I would wear those suckers every day. Okay, so we're almost there. So look at that. Okay. I think I'm gonna put one in between because this is a little too far. And I pull against the leader because I want this as flat as I can get it. Did y'all cut me some batting? Okay, we're gonna have to pause the video here in a minute, but not quite. Wait, 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 wait. Can I watch? I'm gonna drop this down. See that? And I've got somebody coming to put a, and then I'm going to shut my ratchet on this. Now watch, film this. This is what matters. I'm going to bring this up. So I, my next thing is I'm going to put my batting on it. So we're going to pause the video so we can do the batting. Okay, so I had a hot flash, so I had to take off my sweater. But I get so excited when I talk about one more Okay, so here's my batting, and it came off a 96-inch roll. And... I do my batting differently from a lot of people, but I've done about a thousand quilts and I've probably tried it 50 different ways. So you would think that you could just roll this batting up, but you cannot. So we're gonna start by finding the bottom of it. And you don't be cheap about batting, y'all, because I don't care where you buy your batting. I sell batting, that's not my point. But you need enough batting to cover the back on the quilt for a couple of reasons. For one thing, when you go to put these bungee clamps on the quilt, the batting makes it hold on a whole lot better, okay? And plus, you don't want to get going down the quilt and have it be short on one side or the other. I mean, that right there is about 10 cents worth of batting. So, don't be cheap about your batting. And go to put all this money into fabric. So, here we go. And with my batting, I just pin it about every 12, 12 or 14 inches. Just enough to hold it in place. Because remember, every pin that you put in... Is a pin you gotta pull out. And it doesn't help anything because you if you have to make adjustments. Okay, so now like logic would say that you could just roll this thing up. So you loosen your ratchet back here and you're just gonna roll this up. But watch what happens to the batting when I do this. And I'm gonna get the handle put on this. It pulls it back on the back, and we don't want it to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this batting a loose from back here. And we're going to just sort of plop it up over here so we can work with it. 
And we're going to roll the quilt up a little bit, spread the batting, roll the quilt up a little bit, spread the batting, roll the quilt up a little bit. And today I'm getting a handle put on this and I'm so excited because this right here is hard on my wrist. So if you buy a handy quilter long arm, be sure and pay extra for the handle that goes here. Maybe I've got somebody coming to put it on today. Let's see how I'm going to just get this loose and then I'll roll it up a little bit more. Now, I hear all the time from people, oh, I float my batting and I float my backing. I think that's a mistake. You can do what you want, but if you float your batting and your backing, in the end, when you get to the bottom of the quilt, it's gonna be like this. And you're gonna end up with kind of a little conical thing going on at the bottom of the quilt. So I want everything nailed down so that I can get it as straight as possible. So here we go, and I know this is a tedious, Thing, but see how nice and flat that's laying? And you've got room on these frames to do it. It's not a problem here. I think I, I, think I overlapped a little bit here. Getting my bench pressing in today, y'all. And it'll lay just as smooth as silk. You won't have any puckers. Oh, maybe these are called squats. We'll have to do another video when I get my handle put in. This is a new frame. So, so see how we're coming to the end up there? See? We're at the top. So we got a little too much dabbing. No problem. We'll cut that off and save it. <clears throat> we'll save it for embroidery projects or something. Sometimes you need a scrap of batting. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch it down. Because I want everything secure before I start sewing. And then I can just walk away and leave it. Okay. So, it doesn't matter what color thread you use for this part. Okay, so let me wake up my pro stitcher. Well, hello there, darling. And I'm gonna get rid of this workspace because I'm starting fresh on a new project. I'm gonna go over to Pro Stitcher and we'll hit Baste. If you don't have a Pro Stitcher or some kind of automated quilting, I hope every one of y'all get one one day. And it's got a bobbin in it. It's got bobbin threads. So it looks like we're all good. You don't even need to put the bungee clamps on it. But you do need to be careful that you don't stitch on your leaders. So, I'm going to come down about, oh, I don't know, two inches. And I'm just going to base this down so that it'll be out of the way. Hello. Okay. Doesn't have to be straight because we're going to pull the quilt down below this anyway. We just want to get it tacked into place. And I don't use a, a toe gauge either. I'll tell you something. But, well, we'll do another video about this. But I set my bobbin tension one time and I don't ever change it. My bobbin tension is always good. The only adjustments I make are on the top. If you get your, your machine set where it loves a 16 needle and some 40 weight thread, top and bottom, and find the median on the top and set your bobbin the first time you ever use it, then you can just make small tweaks on the top because that's all you're ever going to need to make your machine work right. And there's a lot of discussion about that on the internet. Excuse me, let me get some scissors. But that's what I want. Where's my scissors go? Oh, no, I need to kind of cut this with. Oh. I, need, I need real scissors, big scissors. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so far, we've got our batting down, and the next thing we're going to do is put our quilt top on. And I'm going to base my quilt top, all, I'm going to pin it to the leader, and it's going to be all in one place. So that when you're loaded, you don't have to worry about at the end. This is what floating does, is it'll do this. And I've, I've done it like that, but the quilts, you don't have as much control. Now, I don't want all this hanging around, because I won't be able to see my leader now. Y'all take this home and do embroidery projects with it. There you go. Let me tie this in. 
Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is set my bungees. I really like these new bungees on my new Forte because, oh, that's not right, because they're so easy to use. For a while there, they had non-stretchy ones, and I have to say, I was not a fan. But I really like these. So I'm just going to do two of them right now. But see how that clamps nice on that batting? Because the batting holds it in place. So why not go ahead and have the batting all the way to the edge? I'll just, you know, big shout out to Handy Quilter for the improvements they made on that. Okay, last but not least, we are going to put our top on. So here's the bar for the top of the quilt. And again, it's ratchets and pull it, Frank, pull it loose so we can get this out. And again, I'm going to lay it on the other bar. And the quilt we're doing today is one, I think Laura and I pieced this. This was a class we did. It's a Kirk Atkinson pattern. Lucky stars, isn't that pretty? It's made out of Moda pumpkin blossoms. And we're just going to throw it on here and quilt it right up. Won't take me but an hour or so. So right side up, obviously. Now, I'm, I've got more backing than I need, but I can use my backing as my binding, the leftover backing. So here we go. And I'm just going to wind this up. It's nice to have the extra space on either side, folks, because your head, look at the size of this thing. It's a 24-inch forte. So I just need a few pins, and I'm going to pin that down. Hello. Anybody had their cataracts done? It used to be I could see up close without having to put my glasses on. But now I can drive without glasses at night. And the glare is not blinding. And it's wonderful. And I don't worry about my quilts not being square. Because once you master the quarter inch seam, they're going to be pretty square. And if you use this technique... I think you can, um, I think you can overthink it and I think you can stress yourself out with loading a quilt and um, you don't need to. This is supposed to be fun. We just want to get it finished. Hmm, that's, that's a dull pin right there. But I am trying to get it fairly straight to the leader. You know, fairly tied to that. Okay. Two pins left. Don't need those. They can go over there. Now the last thing I'll do is pull this back. And again, I'm going to use the friction of the leaders to straighten the quilt onto the because it'll do it naturally. I didn't do very well in physics in college. As a matter of fact, my professor told me that if I would just show up for the final, that I would probably make a D, which would have got me through that class because you could have three Ds at NC State. But um, I did learn about friction. And so the friction of the leader is a good trick in this. So just watch. And then, of course, everybody's like, oh, my God. Are you worried that it's not going to be straight? No, I'm not worried because I'm going to pull on it straight and as I quilt it. Look how nice that goes on. You know, and you can take your hands once you get past the pins and just sort of do that kind of thing. And that, folks, is how I, Susan Harris, quilt Lizzie, load my long arm. And we're going to baste it down, we're going to quilt it up, and we'll have it done in no time. So if that's helpful to you, Thank you for thank you for watching.